here we are. Kerbal Space Program. I've been so addicted to this game lately. Yeah, uh, so I decided to take on one of the hardest missions, which is to put a lander on EVE. Now, EVE is uh, kind of a ridiculous place. It's got a very thick atmosphere and uh, a lot of gravity, a big gravity well to, uh, to deal with. So to put something down and get back off, <laughs> you need something really big. And this is, this is safe to say, is the biggest thing I have ever built. Here you can see it's, uh, <laughs> we've got quite a few boosters. I think there's 13 stacks all the way around. Um, actually, no, it's probably an even number, wouldn't it be? Uh, 16. 16 stacks going around. Uh, neat thing about this design is that all of the rockets fire at once. See, I've got a nice rover here on top to land on the planet. A little lander can. Got our science. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna do the whole thing here. So yeah, the uh, all the all the rockets fire at once. This is a, a strictly asparagus staging all the way through. Uh, I don't even know how many stages there are. Uh, two or three dozen stages, but all of these rockets, all of the rockets on the entire vehicle, including all the lander rockets, will fire all at once. So let's go ahead and uh, fire her up. It's got an insane amount of Delta V. You need about, oh, I don't know, around 7,000 Delta V just to get off of EVE. Um, probably more if you want to go down to um, sea level. Speed things up here a little bit so we get to a daytime launch. All right. Looks pretty good, so I got my ladders out. Pop those back in real quick. See my uh, my delta V status here. I got between 14 and 17,000 delta V to play with, depending on whether I'm in an atmosphere or not. It's a little overkill, but uh, I like to go overkill. I'm going to set my orbit altitude pretty low, around 90 kilometers, and my gravity turn is going to start at 23 kilometers. I realize that's a lot higher than most people put theirs, but there's a really good reason for it. Um, I've had to go, go through many, many, many different designs of ships. In fact, I've, I've been working on this on and off for over a month. Um, just trying new design after new design, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but one of the issues that I've run into is that with the larger rockets especially, uh, stability is key. If it's not stable, uh, it's going to come flying apart. It's not going to fly straight. Um, you'll notice that it's very symmetrical. That's uh, so that I don't have to overload it with all these different control modules to try and keep it straight. Um, really the whole thing is designed that as it comes apart here everything stays symmetrical, the thrust stays symmetrical so it doesn't start spinning off into oblivion. So as we go up, we get towards that 23 kilometer mark. You'll notice that everything is very stable. It's hardly moved in, in any way. But when these larger units come flying off, uh, they are really close to hitting. There we go. It hit 23, and now I'm doing my gravity turn. So you see, I wanted to make sure that last stage cleared the, the, the vehicle before we went into a gravity turn. doing pretty well here. Actually playing this at uh, seven times speed. I do have an absolute monster of a computer. It's pretty ridiculous, but uh, with a, a ship this complicated, it really does slow down the frame rate. So if the audio seems a little strange to you, it's uh, because my, my video program is doing its best to speed up the audio by about 700%. I like the way this ship looks here, sort of like something out of Tron. Now I'm going to kill the outside ones. They go flying off. And I've switched strictly to my um, atomic drives. These atomic engines are, of course, uh, the most efficient when you're flying out of the atmosphere. And uh, they don't have a lot of push, that's for sure. There's not a lot of thrust to them, but um, 
There we go. I switched back over. I felt like I was getting a little too close to my apoapsis. I want to make sure I stay behind my apoapsis, and that continues to grow. Okay, so we're uh, we're just cruising to the uh, circulation burn. Mechjib is going to take care of this for us. Now it's real important that we get a nice circular um, orbit before we go to execute our transfer to another planet. Mechjib really, uh, Mechjib kind of flips out if uh, you're not in a circular orbit. So there we go. I'll deploy my uh, solar panel panels. Looks good. Time to go to Eve. Now I set myself up here so I'm already in a good transfer position. Uh, Eve is about 35 degrees behind Kerbin. That way when I do my transfer burn as I come in, uh, Eve will catch up to me. Once again, letting a mech jib get me on a trajectory going uh, Going, going up behind, uh, behind Kerbin. Retrograde to the planet's orbit. Now this is going to be a hell of a burn. Um, uh, loud. I think it's like a 12-minute burn. I mean, even running at 600% is. It's just going to take way too long to watch this go on, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and skip ahead a little bit here to uh, to where we're starting to get to our escape velocity. Okay, this uh, blue orbit circle should be ripping open so that we can get out into interplanetary space soon. Just about there, and boom, there we go. So we're on our way. Just got to uh, adjust our course here. And get somewhat headed towards uh, Eve. And you can see even with Mech Jebba, I didn't quite get to where I needed to be. But that's all right. Um, usually, you got to do some sort of uh, a correction burn once you get out into interplanetary space. So uh, I'll leave uh, the influence of Kerbin and set up a new node. And adjust my close approach. Keep an eye on my electric charge up top. You can see uh, I don't have a whole lot. This, uh, this turns into a problem later. You can see my orbit just changed to purple. It means I'm in the influence of Eve. Sorry about the loud rocket noises. That looks a lot better than I was before. Okay, I am... Wow, I'm right on it. Periapsis of about 23, 22 kilometers. That's going to put me way too close to the planet. I'm going to use Eve's atmosphere to slow down, so I'm going to do a little correcting here. I need to be around uh, 60, uh, yeah, about 60 uh, kilometers. That'll put me into, uh, <laughs> I'll have a pretty darn hot entry, but not enough to, to slow down and actually uh, land on the planet, but enough to, to bring my orbit down within, hopefully within a couple hundred kilometers. 
I really don't want to have to kill too much fuel to uh, to get myself into a stable orbit around Eve, because I want to save as much as I can for for my landing. Once again, I get Mech Jib to take care of my maneuver for me. Just a little course correction here. Oh, and that's it. Let's skip ahead. Okay, we're, so we're coming in on Eve. Periapsis is uh, just climbing up a little bit here as I did a little adjusting as I get closer. And now it's going to get a little hot. <laughs> Hold on, Jebediah. I love these sequences in the game. It's one of the cooler things in uh, KSP. Of course, when they start adding in more realistic uh, heat tolerances to these parts, uh, this probably won't work anymore. I know some of you are out there probably thinking uh, that I'm cheating because this is not a very realistic craft, but Given the difficulties of this mission, I I don't see how you could possibly build a realistic spacecraft that could complete this mission, this, this uh, mission, at least within the parameters of this game. If somebody uh, if somebody has done it, I haven't seen it, and I've looked I've looked at quite a few different videos, which I should probably take a second to mention. Uh, uh, while this craft itself um, is an original design. I designed this craft. Uh, it's been heavily influenced by a whole lot of other videos of people uh, landing on Eve and um, showing the different ways that they've done it. So this is kind of an, a mix of the different videos that I've seen on YouTube of designs. I went through probably a dozen different designs trying to figure this out, which is why it took me so long to figure it out. Um, but Credit must go out to a couple of different YouTubers for their designs. Uh, if you're looking for more in-depth on uh, a how-to to do this message, uh, this mission, uh, I suggest uh, looking around. There's some other uh, there's some other YouTubers that have some some very in-depth, very long videos. One of my goals here was to actually to get this whole sequence down under 30 minutes, uh, considering that. This mission took about 10 hours of actual game time. Uh, 30 minutes is pretty generous. Okay, and circuli circularized over Eve. I'm going to release my probe here. And this is important because uh, when you're trying to land such a large lander, you need a really nice landing spot. Um, I wanted my landing spot to have two, two, two things. Uh, it must have be pretty flat, because um, once this thing lands, if it lands at an angle, it's almost impossible to get such a heavy lander oriented coming coming off the ground. Um, and the second is I wanted it to have uh, quite a bit of altitude, so uh, I was looking for a spot that was pretty darn high up. I used some uh, maps I found online uh, in the wiki. I think I found, well, what, what they claim to be the highest point. Luckily it's not too sharp of a peak, but it is a mountaintop. It's got a flat area to it. So if, if not the highest point, one of the highest points on the planet is where I'm aiming for. And, and that's just simply to give myself an advantage. I mean, uh, it, it doesn't really make a difference to me whether I land closer to sea level or not. I realize that it's more of a challenge to, to land at sea level, but after a month of trying to figure this out, uh, I'm going to be happy with just landing on a, a mountaintop. Here we go, coming in. You can actually see the mountain. This is a cool little design. Once again, not my design, but... Uh, Cool design nonetheless. It's a little rover with a, uh, a sky crane. Designed to come flying in. 
gently drop the rover on the ground and then fly off if all goes well. And I'm not coming down on the flat part, I'm coming down on the cliff. Oh god, and uh, oh man. Okay. Luckily this is a, it's a pretty good design for a little rover. Practically impossible to flip over, and even if you do, it's got a gyro in it, so you can flip it back over on its wheels. I'm going to speed this up to about 20 times speed, because this is a slow rover. <laughs> this took me a long time to drive to the top of this mountain, sad to say, going 7 meters a second. And it's a big mountain, so I skip ahead here. Coming up to the, the summit. Uh, nice and flat. Well, mostly flat. I landed on worse. I think this is going to work pretty well. If I can, uh, if I can get my lander to land right here, I should be able to take off and not take too much delta v to get back into orbit. Well, even though best laid plans don't always work, it's my one of my first attempts to land my lander. Of course, my parachutes don't deploy. <laughs> Look, Jebediah, he survives. Except now he's stranded. If you look in your upper right, my electric charge is the issue here. I did not plan enough energy creation or energy storage, so now I'm just kind of adrift. Problem is that I, I run out of juice and I can't do my correction burns correct on time. And so trying to land this giant lander at the right spot just was not working. So I added some things. I added some uh, solar panels there and a little bit more um, control modules and some batteries. And now we're here with Bill, Bill Kerman. So yes, I, I redid the whole mission. Rather than refilm the whole thing and pretend like I uh, I got it right on the first try, I, I figured it's more entertaining to see uh, see somebody screw up. So, <laughs> so here I come for the I've lost count of how many times trying. And Mechjeb is flipping its shit. I have no idea why it's doing that. All right. <laughs> I don't need you. I already landed one on the planet. So I'm just going to let that guy uh, crash into the surface somewhere. Get out of here. Oh, it was bouncing off into the space. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's kind of sad. Okay, coming in for a landing now. I'm not going to retract those solar panels. I'm not going to need them anyway. I'm going to I'm going to hold on to those large boosters for as long as I can. Get right down near the surface, burning up as much fuel as I can out of them. And then release them and hopefully do uh do a very short burst to get the lander on the ground and not use up too much fuel. Otherwise, both Jebediah and Bill will be stranded here on Eve. Oh, there goes the panels. Just went ripped off. Got my drogue shoots out. So here I actually... Uh, bring it back down. This is the only part of the video where I'm actually going to play it in um, real time. So this is how I experienced this entire mission. Excruciating slow frame rate. 
but this is probably one of the more exciting parts of the mission, so I figured I'd slow it down a little bit and let you see what it actually looks like. Let you see what it actually looks like to land a lander that has 800 parts. <laughs> you know, it's funny is that before building this rocket, just this lander is the biggest uh, ship I've ever built in KSP. Okay, I'm going to jump back up to uh, three times speed here. Just, uh, it's a little too slow coming in at uh, 1x. You'll be able to see everything here at this frame rate anyway, just fine. So I'm going to, I'm going to burn here, and then I'm going to kill my engines, I'm going to discard the outer boosters, and then I'm going to hand it over to MechJeb to do the final landing. And that's going to have to be, all be done very quickly when I get down to within a, a couple hundred meters of, the, of landing. You can see my rover there. There's my shadow coming in. Okay, kill engines, release, auto land, engaged. Goes my shoots. Going in. And, uh, <laughs> a little rock, and uh, we are on the surface safely. Really, really nice. Nice touchdown. I uh, used a little more fuel than I hoped I would, but uh, I think we're still in good shape. I didn't lose any rockets or any pieces or anything. It doesn't seem that like anything broke off when I landed. So it looks like I'm in pretty good shape here. Let's zoom out and see, the, see what we look like on this mountaintop. Hm. Observe the goo. Do some juicy science. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get Bill out of this thing. Lower my lower my ladders. Here he comes. A little bit of a tight fit getting down out of here. And actually, once I got here, I realized that it was kind of a maze trying to get out from underneath this thing. And so I, I kind of, <laughs> I kind of bitched out here. I, I just said, you know what? Forget it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do my science here. Um, plant a flag. Look. Mine. Science, bitches. Yes. Awesome. Um. Although he never really took a foot off the ladder, he <laughs> he's still very confident. Okay. Let's get the hell out of here. I set my turn, my gravity turn, for pretty darn high, up, up around 40 kilometers. Just because I, I want to make sure I get out of the, the gravity well and out of... Eve's atmosphere before I try and turn and start picking up lateral velocity. Do some quick science here. Looks good. You can see my staging starts to go crazy. 
dropping off. Yeah, my thrust to, to weight ratio leaves something to be desired, but it's good enough. I'm no astronaut or engineer or anything like that, so I usually just build stuff over-engineered. I don't really care if stuff explodes as long as it works. Anybody that knows me knows that uh, <laughs> I'm not the most patient individual. Now we're starting to clear the atmosphere here, which is nice. Once we get up above uh, 80 to 90 kilometers, we're pretty much in uh, the vacuum of space. Lose the last of my boosters, and now I'm just uh, I'm down to this one last thing. Oh, forgot to put my ladders in. Oh well. <laughs> Should be good now. I mean, just getting away from Eve, getting away from Eve up into orbit is the hardest part. One thing you might notice about my design here is that I have a, um, a docking port on the front of this thing. And some of you may be wondering why I would do that. Because uh, I was thinking ahead. Here I am trying to uh, get out to Kerbin. Look at my liquid fuel up upper right. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. I am out of fuel. This has just become a rescue mission. Great. So let's uh, see a rescue mission at 4,000% speed. Okay, got a robotic gas can, interplanetary robotic gas, gas can. Fly out. Mess around with the orbits. Get these guys connected. First time messing with MechJeb's uh, docking systems. So yeah, <laughs> see me. Oh, I got. I figured it out. Okay, flying back to Kerbin now. Here we are. We're in the influence of Kerbin, circularizing. I think we're gonna go ahead and try and get right back to uh, Kerbal Spaceport. Oh, don't forget to uh, fix the chutes before we go down. Yeah, good thing. So they'll redeploy. Need to have those. Coming in for a landing. Get a little out of control here. Ooh. Hold on, Bill. Coming on down. Oh, look at my liquid fuel running out. Look at this. 40, 30, 20, <laughs> 10. And it cuts out. Oh, just enough. Perfection. Look at all that science. Covered my vessel here. We did it. 1665 science. That'll do her. Alright guys, I, uh, I hope you liked my trip to Eve and back. It was tough. It took me a long time to figure out, but uh, yeah. Thanks for watching.